Welcome to Shred Show, I'm Chris, and this is the internet's most stoked surfboard show where the budget is so low we don't even have a proper microphone. Last episode was so fun doing a weird board that was really strange, and many of you reached out to say that you liked the idea of doing more boards that differ from the norm. So today, Shred Nation, we're getting strange again. The first thing that struck me about this shape was how the foil of the surfboard back here in the tail almost looks like the nose of a shortboard if you you're viewing it foil-wise. Before we get to that though, it's really obvious that this shape does not fall in the common shortboard family or even the hybrid family of surfboards that we usually discuss on Shred Show. In fact, it seems like most of what we do on Shred Show is centered around boards that you would surf around as long as you are tall, all the way down to like eight inches shorter than your height. This shape, however, is something that you surf about a foot longer than you are tall or even up to two feet longer than you are tall, maybe even more. That makes this shape fall into what is often called fun board or mini Malibu territory, the often known about but very seldom traveled to land between short boards and long boards. A mini Malibu or a mini Mal, as it's often called for short, represents a shrunken down longboard that mimics longboard proportions. For example, a common mini mal could be 70 by 21 and a half by two and three fourths. What's really interesting about this shape is that it has those exact same dimensions at seven feet long, 21 and a half inches wide, and two and three fourths inches thick. At the same time, it's also a vastly different shape that can feel a lot different while you're surfing it. For example, in the outline curve, we see a lot more curve moving towards the back part Part of the board, making this point of the board about a half an inch narrower than a mini mal that would have the exact same width at the widest point. To imagine what that means, imagine your feet placed here and here, and how much float you would feel beneath your back foot as a result of that width reduction here. For example, if this rail was in the face of a wave wrapping around the board right here, it could feel easier to slow and stall the board back in the pocket by weighting the board with your back foot where a tail that had more width to it would feel more floaty beneath your back foot and feel more inclined to move forward with glide and trim towards the shoulder. Now if you ever went to the pond as a kid and fed bread to ducks, this nose might look familiar because it kind of looks like the squashed off bill of a duck the way that it flattens here. That might make the nose look deceivingly wide because again, at about the 12 inch mark right here, this comes in at about an inch narrower than a mini mal nose, again because of the outline curve increasing more towards the nose. Now looking at the foil in this shape, we can see how quickly the board thins out in both the nose and especially back there in the tail. Most interestingly, you can see how that quickly decreasing foil as it becomes thinner is really helped along by how aggressively that rocker in the tail skyrockets upward. Okay, I'm getting carried away with myself. What I'm really saying is that the foil is obviously thinning out very extremely and you can see that as the rocker curve is angling up, it is by its nature making the foil more thin. Up close, you can also see that this board has quite a bit of deck rocker, really in about the last three to six inches or so. You can actually see the deck curving up, creating its own rocker. It's not just rocker curve happening from the bottom of the board. You can imagine really easily what this does. It gives you a distinct lever to push on that works similar to what you're seeing right here. You'd probably feel that most in situations where you wanna pivot quickly such as angling from the pocket up into the lip, or again, angling from the lip down into the pocket. Now really quickly, it's interesting to note that when you see the three major dimensions that are on most every surfboard listed at the stringer or on the deck or on the rail, those are telling you the length, the width, and the thickness of the board at both the widest part of the board and the thickest part of the board. That helps explain why a standard mini Malibu and this board could list the same dimensions, while this board holds holds about two to three liters less volume. Both the front and the back of the board is reducing a lot of foam in this shape by narrowing and thinning things out much more. Look up at the nose rocker on this shape though and you find that it's a little bit flatter and more subdued relative to how extreme the tail rocker is. That obviously helps with planing speed when your weight is up forward on the board because a flatter surface moves more efficiently across water's surface than a curved surface does. So depending on 
your skill level, you may find that this curve is flat enough that you can get your back foot to about here, bend your knee, and then get your front foot up front to hang a couple toes off of this flat nose. Flat up front, quickly gets into a rolled V, pretty sizable rolled V, slowly becoming a double concave, concaves deepening, big V in the middle, concave on either side, all the way to the end. If I can angle this right, as is always a challenge, you can try to get a feel for just how big that V is that runs right down the center of those two concaves. Wiggle it around. You hopefully can see that it's not really a V so much as it's a legitimate double concave back there with a spine that runs down the center of the board. These bottom contours may translate to a smoother ride when your weight is up forward because of the way that this kind of a rolled V in the front can break through chop on the water. What's most interesting to me though is how this V spine can create a positive down in the water feel while you're surfing. That gives a really smooth starting point for tipping the board and creating the beginnings of a carve. In fact, one of the most positive feelings that you may notice while surfing this board is doing cutbacks on a wide open clean shoulder because of the difference that you notice while cutting back on your rail on a longer board like this one compared to a shorter board. You may find that this board lets you bury a large portion of your backward rail back here because of how knifey this part of the rail is here and experience that longer feel of a lengthened connection with the water across a really long rail line. To wrap this up, the word hybrid is usually used to describe a surfboard that takes inspiration from both a fish on the low end and a short board on the high end to create something new. It's very clear though that this is a hybrid as well, mixing elements of a long board and a short board to come up with something much more than just a shrunken down long board. Because of the width and the thickness on this board at center, you'd probably like find that you can catch waves and get to your feet just as easily in junk waves as you could with a mini mal. However, the refinements in this shape would probably let you hang back in the pocket more with a bit more control to look at sections as they pop up in front of you to plan out your options for different maneuvers that you simply wouldn't have access to on a mini mal. Lastly, I think this would be fun for anyone who wants to get their first kind of short board feelings after learning on a long board or a mini mal. I think you'd also enjoy this if you wanted a much cruisier, easy to surf version of a shortboard, especially one with a much longer rail line. Shred Nation, that is it for this episode. We hope the waves are cranking down the street from your house. We'll see you soon with something special on Shred Show. Uh -huh.